In this video, we'll recreate this robot from the game animation as a 20 to 1 scale model in about 5 minutes using a CAD program called OnShape. You can use any CAD program you want, it'll look nearly identical to what we do here. We're going to use OnShape because it's completely cloud based, you don't install any software on your PC to use it. Which means, you don't need a high end PC to do CAD and you can access your design from any PC or Mac anywhere. All you need is a browser. Before we jump into the CAD, let's walk through what we need to do. We'll need a robot chassis that's 32 by 21 inches and we'll divide that by 20 later to make this a scale model. We then want to take this sketch of a rectangle and extrude it up 4 inches to create the robot's base. We'll then sketch the top rectangle 16 inches above the floor at 16 by 14 inches and extrude the base up to that. We'll then punch a hole in here for the balls and we'll add some cylinders that go all the way through the robot to create some wheels. Well, now we just do the exact same thing, but this time in CAD. I'll go to OneShape.com and log in. Again, there's no software to install. You'll need to create an account of course, but don't worry, it doesn't cost anything. Click on sign up, choose the educational account and fill in the blanks. I already have an account, so I'll just sign in. I usually work in metric, but we want inches for this demo, so I'll go to my account and change my preferences to inches and pounds and save the changes. Now any document I open will be in inches and pounds. I'll click on OnShape to get back. You can see where I've already created this robot once, but we want to start fresh, so we just create a document and give it a name. Notice that this will be a public document, that's because I'm using the free version of OneShape, which means you can actually pull up this exact project to view it. Now we just repeat what we did a minute ago. We want to sketch the base of the robot, and that's easiest to do if I'm looking down on top of the robot, so I click on the plane I want to sketch on and hit sketch. This says I'm drawing or sketching on the top plane. In CAD, you always draw on a plane. Think of it as sketching on a sheet of paper. I want to draw a rectangle. I'll use the one that starts at the center and draw the base of my robot. The dimensions already selected, so I'll just type 32 inches divided by 20 to get my scale model. How cool is that? It does the math for me. I don't have to figure out the correct scaling. Now the other dimensions highlighted, so I'll just type 21 inches divided by 20. Now we want to extrude that base, which is all the faces on our first sketch, blindly up 4 inches. Click the green check mark, and if I hold the right mouse button down and move it around, we see our robot base. Next we want to sketch the top of our robot, but you can only sketch on planes and there is no plane up here. So what do we do? Easy, just create a plane. We know we want the top of our robot to be 16 inches above the floor, so I right click on the top plane and just say give me an offset plane, and we see it appears on the screen. And we want it to be 16 inches divided by 20 above the floor. I'll click away and we now have a plane that's 16 inches above the floor. We can also click this arrow to flip sides if we want to. You can create a plane from an existing plane like we just did, or relative to a point, or a plane, or a line, or a set of three points, or even a curved line. Lots of ways to create planes to draw on. Let's label this plane Top Robot and hit the green check mark. To draw on that plane, we can right click here and select New Sketch, or just right click on the plane itself and select New Sketch, or left click on the plane and hit Sketch. There's lots of ways to begin a sketch. We want to look straight down on the robot and draw a rectangle that's 16 inches divided by 20 and 14 inches divided by 20. I'll hit escape to turn off the rectangle tool and grab the center point and move it someplace in here. Let's grab the dimensioning tool and click on this line and shift click on this one and tell it we want the top to start 5 inches from the rear of the robot. I'll hit escape to exit the dimensioning tool and use the right mouse button to rotate the model. To extrude the base up to the top, we need to exit the sketch and select the top of the base 
and hold down the shift key and select the top and click on loft. That extrudes one surface to another. There's lots of cool things you can do with this loft, but we already see our robot, so we're good to go. I'll use my right mouse button to rotate the model. Let's punch a square hole in the front to collect balls. We want to sketch on this right plane now, so I'll click on this to square things up. This time I'll right click on the plane and choose New Sketch. Grab the Rectangle Tool. Draw the hole we want, and we want that to be 8 inches wide, divided by 20, and the side to be 9 inches tall, divided by 20. I'll hit Escape to exit the Rectangle Tool, and let's move the hole down here. If I select this line and hold the Shift key and select this line, I can click on this to tell Onshape to make these lines coincident. That's a quick way to get them to line up and to stay lined up no matter what we do. Now we want to extrude that sketch, but we want to remove material through all, the other direction, and look at that. We now have our hole. Let's also extend that backwards a bit by choosing second end position, and we want to go back maybe 8 inches divided by 20, of course. Now if I hold the right mouse button and rotate this, we see the hole goes past the right plane. That looks good, so hit the green check mark to finish. Let's change the name of that extrude to ball hole so it's easier to find later. We should label all of these, but I'm not going to take the time. To add wheels, we want to sketch on the front plane. And let's square that up. I'll grab the circle tool and draw my first wheel. How about 6 inches divided by 20? I'll right click and copy and right click and paste to get my second 6 inch wheel. Escape to exit the circle tool and move this guy here and this guy here. Let's click on this guy and hold the shift key to add this line to our selection and tell them we want them to be tangent. Then click on this guy, hold the shift key, click on this guy and make them tangent. That puts the wheels right at the bottom of the robot. Let's get our dimensioning tool and select the center of the wheel and the back of the robot and set the wheel to be 5 inches from the back of the robot. And I'll do the same thing for the front wheel. Let's change the name of that sketch to Wheels and hit the green check mark. I'll select our wheel sketch and hit Extrude. We know our chassis is 21 inches wide or 10 and a half inches from the center, so let's make the wheel stick out an inch past that and make the cylinders 11.5 inches divided by 20. To get the other side, we just add a second end position that's the same 11 and a half inches. Great, we see our wheels. So let's call that extrusion wheels and finish it. Great, we have our robot. But there's a problem. We don't want that cylinder messing up our ball hole, right? So should we have waited to do the ball hole until after the wheels? No. Watch this. We can simply move the ball hole to after the wheels and look at that. A nice clean ball hole. Well, that's it. And guess what? It only took us about five minutes to do it. And we don't have to save our work. Everything you do is automatically saved. Let's do one more thing. Let's add a retractable hanging hook like this. This is just a bent paper clip that I can pull up so I can hang the robot. All we need to do is punch a hole through the robot, so I'll select the top of the robot as the plane I want to draw on, right click, New Sketch. And I'll scroll in using the mouse wheel. We want a hole, so I'll grab the circle tool and draw a circle on top of the robot. I know that needs to be about 0.07 inches in diameter to fit the paper clip. I'll hit Escape to turn off the circle, hit Extrude, we want a solid, remove material, through all, OK. Uh oh, looks like the hole's in our ball chamber. So I'll right click on the sketch to edit it. Let's use our dimension tool, select the circle and the back of the top of the robot and make that distance 2 inches. Hit OK. Great, now the hole isn't in our ball chamber. Now we need a slot cut into the bottom of the robot. So I'll hold the right mouse button down and flip the robot over and click here to square things up and scroll to zoom in. I'll select the base of the robot as the plane I want to sketch on and hit sketch. To draw a slot, let's draw a line where we want the slot to be. I'll escape out of the line tool and select the line and hit this button which tells the program this is just a temporary line we're going to use to construct something else. 
Given that, we just select the slot tool and select that construction line and give it a diameter that's a little bigger than the paper clip. Extrude, remove material up to about 14 inches divided by 20. That will stop the slot 2 inches before our 16 inch robot top. Now we have a slot and a hole for our paper clip. I'll rotate that around a bit so you can see it. Great! It looks like a robot. Again, in one shape, you never have to save anything, so we're done. Down here we right click, export. I'll give it a file name and make sure STL is selected. Our units are in inches and we want to download the file. We see the STL file was created and downloaded from our cloud based project to our downloads folder. If we open that folder and double click on the file, Windows automatically shows us the part we created in 3D. And it even looks like it's about the right size. We just hand this STL file to our 3D printer slicer software and print it out. I did that and got this guy. Now I'm going to take my paper clip, put a tab here and slide it into my robot. I want to hook about here and we're done. We now have a scale model robot with an extendable hook that we can hang on the 3D printed field switch. Again, you can do this in any CAD program you want. They're all pretty much the same. I put links to how to get all of them for free below this video. We used OneShape for this demo because we can use it on any PC. We don't need a fancy workstation. And we can work on it anywhere because everything is stored on the cloud. We don't need to carry the files around with us. Which is perfect for our virtual design contest, you can work on this anywhere on any PC. Please know that we barely scratched the surface of what you can do with CAD programs like OnShape and that I glossed over a lot of things to keep this video short. There are tons of tutorials on YouTube and OnShape even has its own learning center. So be sure to check those out when you get stuck or just want to try something new. And remember, if you need help, contact us at the Virtual Grits webpage at georgiafirst.org. We'll connect you with an experienced team that will help you out. We also created written step by step instructions for a robot similar to the one we did here and this one. There's a link to those instructions below the video. Have fun with your robot skill model. We can't wait to see what you come up with. Automation Direct and Georgia First, working together to help you build a brighter future.